Before designing a fusion protein, one must know as much as possible about the two proteins it's made of. So, know your protein. Here are some tips on what to look out for. Localization. First of all, what organism does the protein come from? Where is it localized? If the protein is localized to the mitochondria in yeast and you want to express it in E. coli, it may not be possible. Find out in which conditions the protein is functional. If these are impossible in your chassis, either change chassis or look for an ortholog that can be expressed in your desired chassis. NCBI's BLAST can help you identify the protein domains that may grant a similar function. Domains. Next, it is important to know what the functional domains of the protein are. Are these receptors domains or DNA binding, transmembrane or cytosolic? You may want to keep the parts of your protein responsible for the behaviour you want to keep for your fusion. You can look for this information in research papers and online protein databases like Uniproct, NCBI or more. Finally, conversion. For your fusion protein to work, both proteins need to be compatible. As such, there must be significant homology between the two and preferably even the entire domain that consists of highly homologous regions. Thus, if your protein A undergoes conservational changes upon stimulation, this change must be similarly perceived by protein B. Thus, conserved regions slash domains are important. Let's give an example. This fusion protein binds to ethylene gas and activates a histidine kinase phosphorylating a transcription activator in E. coli. For this, it has the ethylene binding domain of the plant protein ETR1 and the histidine kinase domain of the E. coli protein ENVZ. It is important to note that for these parts of the protein to work as they did originally, there must be significant homology between at least one of the functional domains. In this case, the two halves of the proteins process their respective signals through homologous histidine kinase domains. In silica design. Now you know your protein is like the back of your hand. It is time to decide on a fusion point. In this crucial step, fusing too early in the protein could remove important domains of the protein, and fusing too late could impede the final product's function. To simplify things, work with the amino acid sequence to design the fusion and translate this to the nucleotide sequence before beginning wet work. These are three major criteria for generating a good fusion point. Domain-based. If both proteins share a common functional domain, then this domain can be a good fusion point. If the homology is near 100%, fusion can be done within the domain. But that's not always the case. Often, the functional domains are only slightly conserved due to significant evolution. In these situations, one may try to generate a fusion point preceding the conserved functional domain. Thus, protein A would lose its domain, but the homologous domain from protein B would be present in the fusion. For best results, try two fusion points, one before the domain and one after. Conservation. Even if it is difficult to identify homologous domains, fusion may still be possible. Find a fusion point based off of general conservation. You may find a long stretch of amino acids that are conserved in both proteins, which can be used as a fusion range. Mind you, this method is more error-prone and may require additional scrutiny, such as making sure that the fusion point is done with the same secondary structure in both proteins, like alpha helices and beta sheets. A good fusion point connects the two proteins at conserved regions of both amino acid sequence and the secondary structure. Either by coincidence or by your own choice, both of your proteins have been used in other fusion proteins in the past. If that's the case, you're in luck. No need to reinvent the wheel. Just use the same protein points they did. However, if you rely on previous literature, make sure your fusion proteins parts and the ones explored in literature have the same function. Finally, to verify if any of these variants are functional, you will need to build your own fusion protein gene, transform your cells with it, and do protein assays. <laughs>